What's going on, everybody? My name is Chad Kwiwan Coven. I am a senior technical specialist for product marketing in Data Haiku, and I'm extremely excited to bring you the first ever edition of What's New Data Haiku here on YouTube or wherever you're watching this. So, this series is a new way that we want to talk directly to you, our Data IQ community, or maybe you're just learning about Data IQ and want to know more about the features and functionality of it. Well, you came to the right place. So, this series will happen periodically over the course of the year, and I'm excited to be joining you for it. And we're going to have some more guests from the Data IQ family come in so that it's not just me and you. But for now, it's going to be me this episode. So, let's just go ahead and hop into it. So the first thing on our agenda is that data quality is here. So if you were an OG member of Data IQ, you may remember metrics and checks. That was a way that you can track your data quality as it goes down your workflow, and you could even throw it into your scenarios to operationalize it. Well, now we have data quality, so metrics and checks kind of get a facelift. Data quality is a new way that you can track the health and the quality of your data downstream and upstream as you work through your flow. So in the data set screen, there is now a tab called data quality in your top right hand corner. And from here, you can see how well your data set is doing in terms of its health across the data quality rules that you set. Now there's a long list of rules that you can choose from, many of them preset, but if you want to add your own custom rules, you can go ahead and add that using Python code. Not only is there a Python code available, but you can still use metrics. So all of you metrics fans, don't worry, they're still there. Now, personally for me, my favorite feature in data quality is the timeline. From the timeline, you can check how well your data has been performing over the past couple of days. And you can also see the individual history of each of those rules. So I won't talk too much about it, but we do have a featurette on it, totally independent of this. So I'd say go ahead and check that out for more details. The LLM Mesh has a big update. Thanks to the Data IQ technology team, as well as our good friends at Databricks, Databricks's Mosaic AI foundational models are now supported on the LLM Mesh. Now, if you don't know what the LLM Mesh is, I'll make it real quick. It's just the most robust, secure, efficient, governed way to make generative AI applications. But now, if you are a Databricks user, I would say go ahead and connect to your Databricks and utilize the LLM Mesh and all of its benefits using your Mosaic AI foundational models. So using your Databricks model serving, you can now connect to that API and start creating your beautiful generative AI applications. Now this is just another way that Data IQ and Databricks are making magic together. Many of you who are OG users of Data IQ will remember statistics cards. Now, statistics cards are awesome. I use them all the time, and they're the perfect way to do exploratory data analysis in Data IQ. You may remember that we made it available to utilize the stats that you get from those cards in your flow. So now we made it even easier. In the right hand panel menu, you can now use the generate statistics recipe that generates statistics for not only univariate analysis, PCA, but also different statistical tests for numeric or categorical variables. So this is a great way to utilize uh, stats that you would get from your statistics tab within your flow. There is a new criteria generated for regression models called uncertainty. If you are making a model and you go into your design tab, in metrics, you can check the box of uncertainty, which gives you the ability to generate this new criteria. You can then use that criteria within your model override, where you not only have the criteria itself or the interval size, but also the upper or lower bound of that prediction uncertainty. So now you can choose to override a prediction or decline to predict it altogether if you feel that prediction is too uncertain. And this is really nice because it gives more control over our regression models in our AutoML. 
Last but not least, dashboards are looking brand new and spiffy. If you've used dashboards in the past, you know they looked really good, but now they look even better. So a big update for that is that the filter panel is actually outside of the dashboard now. And this is awesome because it still gives the same great functionality, but it gives a lot more room for your visualizations, charts, maps, and tables to really shine in that dashboard. Another way that dashboards have been improved is just the look and feel is more streamlined and efficient for all of our dashboard creators. And also the date filter is now much more streamlined. There are relative and fixed date filters. So now if you want to filter based on the last day, the last month, the last year, so on and so forth, you can do that in a much easier way. And this stays consistent across data sets, as well as prepare recipes, and of course, in the dashboard. So that's all I have for you for this update. I hope you really enjoyed it, and I'm excited to join you once again in a couple weeks when we have the next update. Until then, go ahead and check out the release notes. There's a lot of good details on everything that I talked about and a little bit more, but until then, take care.